Hello and welcome to Geeks of the Round uh, Dexter Discussion, uh, otherwise known as the Inner Circle. My name is Matt. Uh, I'll be your host today. And I'm here with uh, Deano, uh, a co-host and executive producer. How are you doing, Deano? It's another beautiful day. I'm very happy. I'm in a good mood today because my Nexus 7 arrives tomorrow. <laughs> So it's like I, I so it's like so next week during next week's shows I don't have to have like multiple windows up and everything to keep track of comments and whatnot I can just do it from the tablet. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, we're also here with David. Uh, how you doing, David? Hello. Okay, master of brevity. Um, <laughs> uh, we're here to discuss uh, episode seven oh six. Do the wrong thing. Um, and this uh, the episode was the wrong thing. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> this yeah. This episode did the wrong thing. The, the, the title was for the writers. They did the wrong thing. <laughs> for real. <laughs> so overall, we're gonna we're gonna have to uh, say that uh, it uh, you guys didn't like the episode. No, and with how it's turning out now, I think the season is pretty much in the toilet. I, I thought it was gonna be interesting that like episode two. But uh, it's going downhill very fast now. Yeah, yeah, with this one episode, it's definitely on, on a downward spiral. It's like, I mean, it's not too late for it. They, I feel they can't pick it up. They just, this episode had a bunch of serious missteps. Okay, uh, can we I, just address, like, what the hell was that at the end? Like, wasn't brought on by anything. He just did it. I, I was going to save that to, uh, till later, but we can, we can do that. Um, How do you uh, Basically, uh, we had a situation where uh, Dexter was supposedly going to kill Hannah, didn't kill Hannah, ended up uh, instead uh, revealing a, uh, a very naked Ivan St uh, Strakowicz, uh, and however it's pronounced, and they made love. And, and Dexter brought, it, brought her there to stick it to her, and he stuck it to her. And by the way, what sloppy... What sloppy detective work before he put her down to on the table there? I, he didn't really find out anything. Yeah, yeah, I had noticed that too. Uh, uh, that that he hadn't done a whole lot of work uh, in the the finding out about her, and what little work he did do, Deborah ended up finding out uh, herself. Mm -hmm. Just purely by coincidence. Yeah, it's like this. This entire episode was sloppy to me. Uh, you you had things being taken back, like the thing with Isaac. Now it looks like you know, due to the thing with Quinn, Isaac's gonna get out of jail. Uh, so that's gonna be a, a, an issue again. It, it doesn't make any sense. It's like I mean, they took it back. It's like okay, he's in jail. This is not a problem. Until two episodes later, it's like okay, now this is gonna be a problem again. It's like well, yeah. fuck. Then then putting him in jail in the first place was a waste of fucking time. It was kind of a, a stopgap. So Isaac very well could, where, where we had decided he wasn't the main bad guy before, it's possible that he is the main bad guy. And the question is, is does this season even have a main bad guy? Uh, the, the, the main bad guy so far are the fucking writers. <laughs> that, that, that's the big bad for this season, the writers of the show. <laughs> I will agree that is true for this episode. However, the rest of the season has been pretty good. Yeah, it's been pretty solid. It's just, I mean, damn, man, this is such a major misstep. It's like, yeah, Dexter go through all this work, and it's like, okay, have her on the table. It's like, gonna kill her, gonna kill her, gonna kill her. Nah, I guess I'll fuck her. <laughs> like, really? Okay, like, now I have, a, I have a question. Is uh, Do we think that Lumen's coming back? Or, or we're gonna get a, uh, a, a Lumen scene? Oh. God, I hope not. I, 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 have, I have to agree with David. Probably not for the same reasons, but I, I don't think that'd be a good idea. It's like, I mean, I like the fact... It's like the, the one thing I did like about um, this episode and the season so far in general is that in a lot of ways, um, Deborah, as she's discovering all of this, kind of becomes the, the voice of, you know, the viewer. Because it's like, okay, you did this and this and this. Dex, what the fuck were you thinking? That didn't make any sense. And Deborah's, you know, bombarding him with these things, you know, bringing up the past and and, and pointing out the flaws that have been, that have kind of been there in Dexter's logic and reasoning since the very beginning. 
So, yeah. I like. And that's probably the last nice thing I'll say about this episode. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I think the TV trope for that is is called audience surrogate, to where uh, they they play us. Characters play the, the yeah play the audience. Um, sorry, I spent a lot of time on TV tropes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, they had mentioned that uh, uh, the whole Lumen backstory and Jordan Collier and the Barrel Girls, and uh, that's coming back up, which is why I asked about Lumen. Yeah. Um, and now I completely forgot my question. <laughs> well, actually, I, I, guess, I guess that's all that... Um... LaGuerta has to go on now with Loom, and I guess they could bring her back. I don't really know where else uh, LaGuerta is going to take that. Yeah, it's like, I mean, past that, it's like, I mean, there's there's not really a, a, a lot of stuff going on. It's like, I mean, if she really thought about it, she she could think about, you know, things that happened with Miguel back in, uh, what was that, season four? Was that four? Four, five, something like that. I've been three, yeah. No. Well, Miguel, whatever fucking season that happened, doesn't really matter when it happened. But it's like, I mean, all the things that happened between in, in, in that entire storyline. Uh, but the thing is, she couldn't prove any of it, even if she did actually, you know, manage to pull something out of her ass. Lumen is is pretty much the only loose end in all of this. She's she's the only other living person, other than Deb, that. Uh, well, now I guess and um, Hannah or Hera, whatever. Yeah. That 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 knows um, Dexter's secret. Yeah. Now, uh, now uh, I just wanted to talk about uh, the chemistry between Dexter and Lumen was a little lacking. Do you think the chemistry between him and Hannah is uh, is there a lot more? Uh, I guess, but the chemistry makes less sense. <laughs> How so? At least with Lumen, it made sense. It's like I mean, they were like you know, but, but you know, they they had sort of sort of the same goals and whatnot, and they they had the same mission. So at least it it made sense they, that they should have you know the, this connection between the two of them. Him and Hannah, the only thing that hey, I like killing people. You like killing people. Let's get it on. Let's get. It's so like that that ain't the first female serial killer that Dexter's dealt with. Yeah, I mean, I mean with, with Lumen, she was a uh, traumatized rape victim who he turned killer. <laughs> well, uh, I was gonna say is is I figure that once again, and I'm looking at the the TV or the uh, the books again, is maybe it's their dark passengers uh, uh, attracted to each other. Uh, yeah, but it's like uh, okay, reading the books is like I guess you could, you could see that, but it's like I mean. You almost really can't compare the two anymore. It's like the show has taken such a dramatic departure from any place that the books has gone that that you really it's 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 very difficult to compare the two at this point. Well, oh, if you oh. look, if you look at Lila, because that was basically the story with uh, uh, Dexter and Lila, is uh, their dark passengers were were kind of attracted to each other. At least that's how I viewed it. And but Dexter... yeah, but you, you didn't knowing about the you know the dark passenger thing and having read the books. If you had not have already had that knowledge going into it, would you have made that same connection? That's true. That's true. I was gonna say is is a little bit of that plus the fact that Hannah definitely uh, uh, follows his type of skinny blonde girl. Mm-hmm. It's like I mean, it's like I mean, is she fine? It's like I mean, hell, it's like I'd have probably fucked her too. But the very simple fact of the matter is that storyline-wise, it didn't make a hell of a lot of sense. <laughs> now, I'm really disappointed in this episode. Batista wants to retire. <laughs> oh, I was going to leave uh, Quinn and Batista till the end. Yeah. All right, so what do you want to talk about now, then? <laughs> uh, good point. There's not much to talk about. Yeah, it's like, that's the thing. It's like, not a lot happened. It's like, I mean, you had the introduction of this new character, this uh, this author who, who's writing a book, who, who wrote a book on Hannah's ex-boyfriend and now trying to write a book on her because 
he figured out that that you know that she that she's been killing, and that even that doesn't make sense. Like if the evidence is 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 so there and so accessible that even he figured it out, how the fuck come the police hasn't have to figure this one out? Normally Dexter is is literally outsmarting them at every turn and, and, and seeing things that they're not seeing due to him being a killer himself. I know it's not wild theory time, but I'm just gonna throw this out there that the author is also a killer and he intimately knows Hannah. That would make sense. There's got to be some sort of connection there, just just something that made him start looking into this. Because it's not like he was just sitting around one day, you know, eating some Cheerios and watching the Ellen show, when all of a sudden he figures out, wait a second, she's killing too! Well, he wrote a book on the guy. He probably spent a lot of time with her. Well, yeah, but it's like he, but it's like there, there was, there, there's nothing, it's like, okay, wrote that book, that's done, hey, look at money. And okay, so so what spawned the investigation to go back into that and look at her and be like, there has to be something that sparked that idea in his head. It's like ideas like that just don't magically fall from the fucking sky. There's got to be I some want, connection there. I want to know exactly how long this particular character is going to last in the show. I don't think he's going to last very long. I figure he's got three episodes max. Uh, Hannah will probably kill him. You think so? It's like I mean, you think yes. he's gonna have a heart attack. Yeah, yeah, that that seems to be her primary way of uh, of, of of sorting things out. It's like because it, we've already seen it. It's like people who are uh, becoming a problem to her or in her, in her way end up dead. Now, I think that someone knowing that the fact that you're a serial killer and that you've killed three motherfuckers that's pretty inconvenient. I don't think he's gonna have that high of a lifespan. And then once she does kill him, um. Then it's like I mean, because Deborah, De Deborah and him already have this like you know association and whatnot. He dies. She's gonna ask Dexter, Dexter what the fuck is going on. Okay, help me here. Uh, when she was fifteen, that death, and then the uh, the greenhouse owner, and then the husband. Where was there any other suspected deaths uh, uh, attributed to Hannah? I think I think that's it that have been brought up. Okay, and we don't know the... Okay, then here's my wild speculation time. Uh, Hannah is not a serial killer. Explain. Compassionate uh, uh, death giver. Oh, Angel of Death? Angel of Death. Well, her husband was like 40. Yes, but we don't, we don't know exactly what and his circumstances are. He could have had cancer. He could have... It, it could have been anything. She stabbed that one girl. Medical history was good. Yeah, but one one death is the uh, one death is not uh, a, a does not a serial killer make. Three does. But she but she profited off the old lady. Yeah, and, and did you notice when that was filed? It was filed literally months before the lady uh, before the lady died. It was filed in May of two thousand ten, so it would have been. Very shortly before, I think the old lady gave it to her in exchange for the angel of death. I think she asked to die. Okay, all right. I I can. The evidence is pretty slim, but it's like I I can see we were going there. Okay, that's a valid speculation, and we can go with that. That's just that's my wild speculation for the day. Yeah. Pretty wild is like I mean I I see where you're coming from. It's like I mean in some ways it does make a lot of sense. But the, what huh. do you think, David? No. No. <laughs> yeah, it's like well, um, writers won't find a way to just screw everything up. It's like I mean I I really just can't get over how disappointed I was with with, with this particular episode. It, it just. It, it it just didn't do it for me on on any level. And it's, it's it's the first episode this season that I've been able to say that. That's that's uh, very true. Um, a scene I wanted to uh, remark on was the scene in which Deborah ends up getting mad at Dexter. Um, do you think this is the end of the whole Deborah has a crush on her brother thing? Okay. Because he told her to go out on date and she got all pissed. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's something that the writers actually did do right. I don't know. 
Because because that would that would be a fantastic thing. It's like I mean, I kind of thought the whole spell was broken um, the moment that she found out what Dexter really was. But if there was anything niggling there in the background, if this is what it took to kill it, hey, hallelujah. <laughs> um, I just I just thought it was. Uh... I just thought it was convenient timing that uh, uh, that he told her to go on a date and and she got all pissed off, and he had no idea what what she was talking about. So I fig- so I assumed that it was because of the fact that maybe she still did have feelings. Yeah, that's possible. It's, it's it's definitely possible, but it's like I mean at this point it's like she's she's found someone else anyway, someone else to put her time and attention into, and hopefully that'll be what it'll be, and we we never have to hear this weird you know Dexter Deborah hookup thing again. We never have to worry about that. It's like you know the writers can just go ahead and stop snorting cocaine before they write scripts for the show, and everything will be copacetic. Like, I mean, obviously, when they wrote this one, they were taking hits from a crack pipe. It's like, I mean, come on. The writers just wanted to see Yvonne naked, which, okay. I can't accomplish that without screwing up that storyline. <laughs> they they, they, they could have, but they were probably horny. It's like, no, we ain't got time to write this in a way that makes sense. We want to see this bitch's tits. <laughs> <laughs> she, was, uh, she was actually scrunnier than I expected her to be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She was bonier than, than than I generally like. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, in any case, that completely threw me off my my groove. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess Batista and Quinn time. Um, yeah, Batista's uh, looking to retire. Do you think he can retire? Do you think it has to do with? Uh, um, with Mike's death, uh, it, it probably does. It, it probably it probably has more to do with with uh with you know him throwing that theory out there about about Mike's killer and having uh and, and having it just completely shot down and just you know just being tired of the bullshit and just wanting to find a way out. I, I, I think they, I think they just wanted a spin off series inside to get Batista a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I watched that. The show is going to end next year. <laughs> exactly, they're 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 setting it up for the, for their spinoff. It's like, yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> and, uh, we already had that Mitsuka, show. It's called The Finder. M- Mitsuka will be the chef. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and Quinn will be the drunk that comes in every once and again and and fucking grabs women's asses and has to be kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be awesome. <laughs> oh, I, I will watch that because that would amuse me. <laughs> now, a, a theory that was put up on uh, one of the boards was the fact that the scene with Batista and Jamie was there specifically to remind people that the two of them are related. Would you agree? Uh, I didn't really because agree. Because she kind of had the... Hey, uh, um, I love you, uh, but I I can't agree with you. And only a sibling can have that conversation. Uh, I I don't think anyone really cares about that character. About but, Jamie? Yeah. Yeah, she's. I mean, past being Dexter's babysitter, that's really kind of been her only role. It's like she was introduced as, Dex- as, De- as Dexter's kid's babysitter, and that's pretty much what she's been the entire time. It's like well, that's, be- what, I'm, that's yeah. what I'm saying, is I think they're trying to reintroduce the idea of that she is, that she has more of a role than just that. I, I don't think the writers have shown themselves to be capable of that level of uh, thought. <laughs> I'm kind of having to agree with that. You two are judging the entire season way too harshly based on one episode. Not no. true. I have been very critical this season overall. Okay. 
It's like, and I'm, I'm judging. It's like, I mean, because I, I can go seasons back and, and point out bad writing and, and stupid plot points and whatnot. It's, it's been a consistent thing. It's like, I mean, the show overall uh, tends to be strong, but it's like, the, there, there's a few moments. It's like, I mean, seriously, what the fuck were y'all thinking? <laughs> I mean, like, just yeah. some examples. The whole Dexter. The, the, sh- the show, su- the show seems to suffer from really good casting and poor writing. Mm-hmm. Am I a freak in saying that I actually liked Lumen? No, I, I, I like Lumen too. It's like I mean, I, I didn't think that she was the be- she was the best written person in the world, but she had a lot of depth, and I liked Julia Stiles playing that role, and I, and I, and I thought overall the storyline was good. It's like I mean, it slipped a few uh, on a few places where you know I personally would have made different choices, uh, but yeah, it's like I mean, I, I, I did like Lumen. I'm going to say that that season with Lumen, the story was way more interesting than it is in this season. Like, I'm not interested in what's going on at all with the Russian mobster or this chick from Chuck. I don't even... I, I don't remember her name because I don't care about her. <laughs> it's hard to care about. It's like, I mean, you just, all these characters are just kind of thrown in there and... I don't know. It's like, I mean, they have so much up in the air and, and we're already, uh, what, like six episodes deep at this point and mm-hmm. there still doesn't seem to be any direction I mean, I mean think about it from from seasons past about three episodes into a season you you knew what was you you knew it was going to happen you know it's like this is the challenge that dexter is going to have to overcome and, and and that's what happened that's that that tends to happen every season you you can kind of see the layout of the season from the first few episodes it's like we're on season six and we still don't even know who the bad guy is that's very true that's very true like that doesn't make any sense. No, we can at this point uh, uh, assume that it's probably Isaac again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe again because <laughs> he was told <laughs> that he wasn't. So yeah. and, and just and just like his great speech from last week, he bided his time for two whole weeks, and he yeah, will... yeah. I'm gonna bide my time, and then I'm gonna come for you years later. You know, or a week, you know, whichever comes first. <laughs> <laughs> God, man. It's like, I mean, just see, and that, that's what I'm talking about. The level of inconsistency in the writing and, and, and the plot is like, I mean, I, they're just making this shit up as they go. <laughs> and, and, I can't disagree. There was no episode that was a clearer example of that than what I watched, well, what I should have watched yesterday, but when, when in reality I watched a few hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> Now, do, do you think it's a little far-fetched that Quinn would be in love with a stripper so much that he'd be willing to uh, risk his job and his life and his pension and everything else to, to break the law for it? He was already a dirty cop. It's not that big of a stretch. Well, to me, it is, it is a big stretch. It's like all of a sudden, it's like, no, it's like, I don't want the money or anything. Oh, no. This dancer I met a few weeks ago is in danger. She could be in a sex club and like in off across. Oh man, I can't have that happen. I'm gonna commit felonies in order to protect her because I love her, motherfucker. You just <laughs> yet another storyline that doesn't make any fucking sense at all. Well. From me to Batista, I hope that he finds himself the uh, the perfect mimosa, or whatever the hell he drinks, <laughs> and I and I hope Quinn goes to hell. I what I hope is that episode seven oh seven is is a hell of a lot better than the filth that I just had to watch. <laughs> Seriously, it's like amazing. Quinn, Quinn, Quinn used to be convinced Dexter was a killer. Now he's like, uh, he doesn't even really notice him. I guess. And he never stopped thinking that. He just, like, gave up on it because he was dating Deborah. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, so did I. Well, uh, is there any wild speculations we want to throw out there? No. Just yeah, I, I have some wild speculations. The season ends and Deborah <laughs> dies. I know. Yeah, here's my wild, wild speculation. The next episode might not suck. <laughs> I know it's crazy, particularly based on what we just saw. You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be hating on my theories, David. 
<laughs> Do we have uh, anything else then? They need to go somewhere with this. It's like it's we're we're, we're more than halfway into the season at this point. They need to start putting a focus in. They need to give this the season some direction. And I thought it would have more direction given that this is the penultimate season. They know they have this season and next season and that's it. That should that should allow for more direction. That should allow for them to to not only frame the what what's gonna happen this season, but the next one as well. They know exactly how many episodes they have left to tell their story. They need to fucking start. Okay. Um, well, in that case, I think I'll wrap everything up. Um, this is Matt with Geeks of the Round. You can find us at uh, geeksoftheround.com, www.geeksoftheround.com. You can find my videos at geeksoftheround.com slash nobody, spelled with an E, N-O-B-O-D-E-Y. Uh, you can find Dayanos at uh, geeksoftheround.com slash Evo Anubis, spelled exactly how it sounds. And anything you want to pimp, David? Nope, and if you try to look me up on Google+, Plus, you will not be able to find me. I can find you. I do not show up on the search bar. Oh, nice. Yeah. You don't even have a lower, you don't even have a lower third uh, saying down there. Uh, yeah, that's because this episode didn't deserve one. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, uh, from Geeks of the Round, I just want to say uh, have a great night and peace. <laughs>